Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with refried beans. That's right, refried beans are one of the great mysteries of the culinary world. Since how can there be a recipe for refried beans when there's no such thing as a fried bean recipe? Well, I'm very happy to report that I'm not only going to show you how to make this fantastic side dish, but I've also solved the mystery of the name. And I will get into that at a more appropriate time. But for now, let's go ahead and get started with one possibly optional step. I'm going to go ahead and soak one pound of pinto beans in cold water overnight. And like everything these days, there's a lot of controversy on whether you should do this or not. And I'll let you do your own research on that. But I've been a bean soaker from way back. So I did let mine soak in cold water for about 10 or 12 hours. At which point they should look something like this. And what we'll do at this point is drain those beans. And then we will transfer those into our stock pot. And we'll add a couple more ingredients. Including some peeled garlic as well as a little bit of Mexican herb called epizote, which unless you grow it is not that easy to find fresh, but it is much easier to find in its dried form. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple pinches of that. And in case you're wondering, this is sort of an extra strong, sort of minty oregano. And if you can't find it, some dried oregano will do just fine. And then last but not least, we will add some nice cold fresh water. And no, we didn't forget the salt. We're gonna add that later. So we will add our water and head to the stove where we're gonna to wanna to bring this up to a boil on high heat. And by the way, contrary to popular belief, if you stare at this, it will still come to a boil. I've tested it, and trust me, it was very scientific. But anyway, we will bring that to a boil. And once that's happened, we're gonna do three things. We're gonna give it a stir, we're gonna reduce our heat to low, and we're gonna let this simmer uncovered for about an hour and a half or so, or until your beans are soft. So this is what mine looked like about 90 minutes later. And we'll go ahead and check these for doneness. So I gave mine a little test and determined they were tender and also extremely hot. So yes, there's probably less painful ways to test that. But anyway, once we've determined our beans have simmered long enough, we can transition from pot to pan. And the first step in that process would be to melt about a half a cup of lard over medium high heat. And I know it looks like more than a half cup, but that's probably just some kind of optical illusion or something. And yes, we really do want to use lard here, which is rendered pork fat. Okay, a lot of people use vegetable oil, I'm not sure why. Or vegetable shortening, again, I don't know why. Or a lot of people use bacon fat, which is better than vegetable oil. But for me, it just overpowers the dish, and you don't get what I consider that authentic refried beans flavor. So use what you want, but I am highly recommending lard. And most of the blog posts will be me trying to talk you into that. But anyway, once our fat melts, we'll go ahead and toss in our diced onion, as well as some kosher salt. And we're going to go ahead and let that onion cook, but a little longer than usual. Okay, usually for this stuff, we cook the onion on medium until it's just translucent. But here, not only are we going at a little higher temperature, but we actually want to cook it until some of the onion starts to brown. Okay, so don't be afraid. Let it cook in that lard until it starts to brown up. And I thought this was getting pretty close right here, but I let it go for another minute until it looked like this. At which point we can add in two more ingredients. Some minced up serrano pepper. I know it looks like jalapeno, but it's much hotter. And then we'll also toss in a little bit of dried chipotle pepper for some additional heat, plus a tiny touch of smokiness. All right, very slight, just a hint. Which, by the way, again, is why I prefer the lard over bacon fat. For me, the bacon fat is way too smoky. But anyway, we're going to stir that in, and we will cook that for just one minute. At which point, we can go ahead and transfer in our drained beans. Except I'm not going to drain the beans. I'm just going to use one of these spider strainers to fish it out. And please, do not discard any of that liquid. We are most likely going to use all that, so be sure to reserve any and all cooking liquid. But anyway, we'll go ahead and transfer those beans into our pan. And then what we'll do before we start adding the aforementioned liquid is smash these beans. And there are many different approaches to this. Some folks will just use the back of a spoon or a spatula. And then there's others that swear by the potato masher, which does do a really nice job. But no matter what you choose to use, I like to smash up about half the beans before I start adding the liquid. And speaking of adding liquid, the rest of this recipe is as easy as it is boring and repetitive. All we're going to do here is reduce our heat to medium and continue cooking, stirring, smashing, and mashing those beans while adding more liquid until we've reached our idea of refried bean perfection. And the two big decisions you have to make here is how thin or thick you want your mixture, as well as how smooth or chunky. All right, some people like this so smooth they'll actually blend the beans first. Whereas others might only mash in a quarter of the beans and have something that's super chunky. Okay, personally, I'm not going to dirty a food processor or a blender, but I do enjoy my refried beans fairly loose 
and pretty smooth. But regardless, the technique is the same. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to explain the mystery of the name. Turns out refried does not mean fried again. It actually translates as well fried. As in, cooking these beans so well, they turn into like a saucy paste. So that is the official reason why they're called refried. And that info could come in handy if you ever find yourself on a legume-based game show. But anyway, just keep cooking, keep stirring, possibly smashing and mashing, but that's up to you, depending on how chunky you want it. And of course, if you think yours is perfect before all the liquid's used up, stop. But I generally use it all, which I definitely did this time. And once I was done cooking and stirring, mashing and smashing, and adding liquid, this is what mine looked like. Okay, so like I said, I do like mine pretty smooth. But having said that, it depends on what I'm going to use it for. Okay, if I'm doing burritos, I might want something a little thicker. Whereas if I'm doing beans and rice, or maybe nachos, I might want something a little thinner and less chunky. So of course, all that's going to be up to you. You guys are the queens of your beans. So whatever pleases you, your royal highness. But anyway, above and beyond deciding how much to smash them, and how much liquid to add, the other thing we must do is taste these and adjust the seasoning. Okay, properly salted refried beans are one of the most delicious things you'll ever taste. And yet, undersalted refried beans are borderline inedible. So I went ahead and stirred in some salt, and then I gave that one final taste. And then once we've determined our texture and taste are perfect, we will go ahead and serve that up. And then one little food styling tip here. While these mashed beans are incredibly delicious, they're not what I would say the most attractive substance. So may I suggest going around with your spoon like this to create some ridges and gullies to break up that surface. When it comes to something like this, shadows are your friend. And then I went ahead and finished up with a little bit of queso fresco, which is sort of like a very mild, less salty, less tangy feta. And then I would have garnished with an epizote sprig, but I don't grow that. So I used the next closest thing, which was oregano. And by oregano, I mean marjoram. And that's it, our refried beans are ready to bring to the table. Or should I say mesa? Actually, I'm being told I should just say table. And I could start listing all the things this would be amazing to serve next to, but there's too many things to list. So I'm just going to grab a fork and go in for a taste. And if you've never actually had real, semi-authentic refried beans, I predict you're going to be blown away, especially if you use the lard as directed, which for me, along with not undersalting, really is the key here. So I really did thoroughly enjoy these. But if you thought I was going to end this video just eating these on a fork, well, you got another thing coming. One of my all-time favorite uses for this stuff is to upgrade nachos. And if you are planning on doing something similar, possibly for the Super Bowl, for example, we'll want to make sure there's enough liquid in there so it's loose enough to spoon over. And then you probably know the rest. We will top that with a little bit of cheese, or even better, a lot of cheese, as well as maybe some sliced peppers. And we will pop that under the broiler until it looks awesome. And that's it. I can now finish this video properly by eating these in front of you. Oh, I would give you some if I could. But they're mine, not Joe's. But anyway, that's it. How I make refried beans. So whether you're going to make up a big batch of these for some kind of sports-related party, or you just want to add a delicious and incredibly versatile recipe to your rotation, I really hope you give these a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.